first of all, what were we saying? Yes. It you want to go to war, you need armies. In order to need in order to have armies, you need to build equipment. In order to build equipment, you're going to have military factories building that equipment that is generating a certain amount of production per day and consuming a bunch of resources depending on whatever whatever you need. So basically the, this, the game is as follows. You don't get anything for free. Everything you need to do is produced, right? And what you don't have access to, you can trade for. Uh, that's the construction screen. Here we go. The trading screen, which is here, is... <clears throat> uh, is basically you are importing... Uh, goods, the uh, resources in this particular case, from other nations who are exporting it. Now, how are you paying for it? Well, you're paying it with civilian factories. So let's talk about civilian factories first. Everything is uh, seems very complex, seems very complicated, but I'm going to first explain it this way, and then I'm going to give you the uh, the what you need to know cliff notes at the end so first so bear, bear with bear with me for a while so we said that the factories of your country are split between military factories which you use to build equipment uh dockyards which you use to build uh, ships and civilian factories so what do you do with the civilian factories civilian factories first of all <coughs> based on your economic policy or or economic law which is this one here, we're going to come back to it, but based on this, there's a number of civilian factories that need to supply the economy. They need to supply your own population. So right now, out of the total of 31 civilian factories that we have, that we own, yes, nine of them are set aside for running the uh, affairs of the country, per se, right? They're building toasters. Uh, they're, they're building consumer goods, basically. Right? Uh, now, this is, uh, this, the way this is determined is as follows. Right? You get a total of civilian and military factories, which is 60. Right? So the military factories are also uh, taken into account when, they're calculate, when this number is calculated. So you've got to understand that if you build uh, just military factories, you can inadvertently increase this number because you are increasing the sum of civilian military factories. So the number of civilian military factories that we own is 60. Right? Uh, partial mobilization tells you that 25% of 60 is, uh, well, we're not going we're, we're, we're to run the numbers, but they take 25% of 60 and this 25% is ponderated down by 5% from the MIFO bills and 3% from uh, from the stability. So uh, the, it says here, with our current economic policy, the people expect 16% of our of the number of civilian and military factories to produce consumer goods. This 16% can only be filled out of civilian factories only because only civilian factories can produce consumer goods. Military factories produce guns, and we live in a world where where in the world designed by paradox, guns are not consumer goods. Uh, so basically, we have 31 civilian factories. The number that's determined out of the 16% of uh, 16% of uh, of 60 is uh, nine. So nine civilian factories are being used in this. Uh, consumer goods thing. Now, we have one factory that's being that's been traded away for eight tungsten. So basically you can uh, and this is how you rationalize this. So you trade when you trade for resources, you trade your civilian factories. Basically you're saying I want your resources to this other country, right? In in our case Sweden, right? I want the resources that you have uh, I will pay you by producing stuff for you, basically whatever you need, with my civilian factory. So this civilian factory that's located on my territory 
is now assigned to the whims of Sweden. And Sweden, if we were to see, they could actually they would actually use this this uh, this factory. So basically, uh, for Sweden, they would have one here from trade, and they would have 32 civilian factories. Now, there's one thing that you need to understand is that uh, the uh, the way the way it works is consumer goods factories are always subtracted out of the owned factories, right? And uh, then the from trade is always applied on top of it. The from trade one doesn't influence uh, doesn't influence this uh, civilian and military factories part. The the sixty no, that's only the ones that we own. Okay, so you don't get into a feedback loop of what you're trading so much that you get a lot of civilian factories, but then they increase your consumer goods factories too. No, it doesn't work that way. Whatever you get from trade. Uh, whatever you get from exporting your resources, you can use directly. So what is the usage of civilian factories? Well, civilian factories are used to build up your country. Basically, uh, they... So everything... So like I said, the military factories produce a certain amount of... Let's, let's just... Uh, <clears throat> let's just uh, pop something down and I'll explain. And I'll explain it later. So... Uh, as I said, the uh, the military factories produce a certain amount of output per day that is then converted into all these uh, military things, right? Guns, cannons, and so on, right? Well, civilian factories also produce a certain amount of output per day. <coughs> as you can see, the factory output is also seven. Is also five. The civilian factories output is also five the military factory output was also five pretty simple pretty familiar right now what happened here is we've queued up and we're going to unqueue this we've queued up something to build which is infrastructure we're going to talk about why infrastructure is important so basically let me put it this way these are all the things that you can build in your nation i'm just going to pop one each so that we can discuss them later on uh, i'm not going to leave i'm not going to leave them here uh, okay, now there are also some things that are grayed out, which means we don't have the technology to build them, but technically we could also build these things too, radar site, uh, rocket site, and uh, nuclear reactor. Now we're going to talk about what, else, what they all are in, the time, in their due time. So, what happened here? This is, what can you build with your civilian factories? You can build infrastructure. We're going to discuss why it's important later on. We can build, you can build an air base, which is basically one of these airports. Why are they important? Well, you can station, a, you can station airplanes there, and the higher the level. Uh, so here I'm building one level of an air base in Vesserams, whatever, whatever it was. Yeah. So what this means is, each, uh, each state in, uh, so the the country itself. Uh, is organized in states or provinces if you want to look at it this way right so these are the provinces just by clicking on them you can see they have the, the name here right so here <coughs> in Vesserems and right, I uh, we have six infrastructure when you when you look at it you can you can also discern this information just by clicking on so you have Six infrastructure, you have a level three air base, you have zero amount of anti-air, you have six unlocked slots, and we have two civilian factories based here, two dockyards, and one fuel silo, and one empty slot. <coughs> also, Vesserems contains 2.6 million people, which gives us a uh, some recruitable population and some civilian population. Uh, and you can also hover over and see what the monthly growth is. Vesserams are growing uh, 63 recruitable population per month. Now we're going to talk about this later on. Um, I know it sounds very complicated, but it's actually very streamlined. I just want to get all the explanations out of the way first and then and then we can revisit them later on 
as we go through the streamlined version of, of, of the game. <coughs> so, um, what was I saying? Yes, we all, you are only allowed one air, uh, one uh, air base per uh, province. So here in, uh, in Hanover, we have no air base, so if we were to construct one, it would show up somewhere wherever the game has decided to, it's, it's, it's allocated. Here in Schle Schleswig-Holstein, we have a level 5 air base, and it's right here. So basically, what's going to happen is <coughs> we're going to add another level onto this air base. That's what, we, that's what we've done. The max level air base is... Uh, this is level 6. Uh, I don't think we have one in Germany. I think the max level that we have built in Germany altogether is level 6, uh, which means it can... Uh, so basically a level 1 airbase, let me see, do we have any level 1 airbases? Hmm. Ah, this is in the demilitarized, see, in the, this, this airbase is in the Rhineland, it's in the demilitarized area, we cannot transfer any airplanes to this airbase because the airplanes are military, so, yeah. So we don't have, uh, but we have a level 3 airbase, so we're going to discuss uh, this thing. So basically, each level of the airbase allows you 200 planes to be put there. So this is a level 6 airbase, it has a maximum of 12,000, uh, of 1,200 planes. This is a level 3 airbase, it has a maximum of, uh, it has a maximum of 600 planes, right? Uh, maximum possible level is a level 10 which has a maximum of obviously 2000 planes. So what we're doing here in Vessar Ams is we are improving this airbase by one level. We're not going to keep that, I'm just showing you what, what's happening. Also what else can we build? We can build <coughs> AA which is an anti-air uh, machine. Maximum level is 5. You can control the levels from here. Right. We're all, you can also build military factories, you can build civilian factories. Yes, you use civilian factories to build civilian factories. That means you get a snowball effect. It's actually a, a well worth strategy building civilian factories early on <coughs> to increase your capacity to build your nation further by compounding this, uh, this effect. You can build uh, fuel, you can build a synthetic refinery. Now, the synthetic refinery um uh, does two things basically it doesn't need fuel to run don't think about that but what it does is it produces uh, rubber and it produces a certain amount of fuel per day the amount of rubber and fuel per day that you get to produce is influenced by uh, is influenced by uh, your technologies you will never be able to produce enough refineries to keep a major power um, supplied with fuel with with just synthetic refineries. It's just not feasible. It wasn't feasible during the war, but you will be able to fulfill your your rubber uh, prerequisites as long as they're not too as long as they're not too large. So basically. <clears throat> You don't have to go and invade the Dutch East Indies or uh, British Malaya for rubber. You can produce in-house enough rubber to to produce enough equipment for your for your army. So that's what the uh, synthetic refinery does. The fuel silo is just uh, increasing your fuel capacity. It's increasing your stockpile of fuel, so, which is this overall thing. And I'm going to pause for a second because the cat needs food. I'm going to pause the recording here and I'll be back in a moment. And I'm back. Now, of course, for you, that was an instant. For me, I went and fed the cat. I got a little something to drink just to keep my uh, throat from breaking. So, I was saying that by building a fuel silo, we increase the fuel capacity, which is the one, two, three, four, five, fifth line. There we will increase it by a certain amount. <clears throat> Sorry about that. 
So this allows you to stockpile more fuel before the war starts. There's a very interesting video done by Feedback Gaming which uh, he stockpiles a lot of fuel with Germany before the war and then tries to finish the war without importing any more fuel. So basically just using the, without importing any more oil. So basically just using the fuel that he stockpiled for all the campaigns that he's done. And he succeeds. You can look it up. It's, it's very interesting. All right. Now, uh, we're building a naval base here, which is, again, just like the air bases, the naval bases have a certain level from 1 to 10. And we're going to discuss what they do later when we discuss supply chains. For now, you can, um, you can know that uh, in uh, you need... You can keep your ships in the naval base. In the naval base, let's say that's the usage of it for now, right? So that they don't sit out at sea. No, this is a port, so you can put your your ships in in port. We're going to discuss later on what that is. Uh, this <clears throat> is a fort, and the fort can be uh, put. So this particular fort we 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 are building right here. Now uh, I'm going to show you what a fortification looks like. Here in the Czech Republic, there's some, uh, actually, it was Czechoslovakia back then. Here, we have a, f a land fort, land fortification. Uh, and it's, it, again, it goes from levels 1 to 10. You're going to see this repeat itself quite often. Now, this is level 1, and here we have the famous Maginot Line, which is level 10 forts all along the way. Now, what does level what does what does the fort do? It protects the defending army. Basically, it reduces the damage and increases the yeah. It reduces the damage of the attacking army that the attacking army does to to the defending army. Now, Germany, I don't think has has any forts. Now, these forts are of two ways. One is uh, what we're building here is a land fort, or the other one is a coastal fort. A coastal fort. Uh, does basically the same thing as the uh, the land fort, which is increases that uh, decreases the uh, damage that the attacking army does, but only in the case of a naval invasion. So basically, if you remember D-Day, right? The Allies come, uh, the Allies come in and uh, and uh, land all around here in Normandy, right? Well, let's say you've got some. You've got some army here, and if they they have a fort on top of it, right? The allies would have to overpower your defenders in order to establish a beachhead, in order to land, right? These forts make it harder for them to to do that. All right. So what we have actually here are production queues, right? And we have 15 factories. We have 15 civilian factories assigned at once. That's the maximum. Of the assignment you can drag and drop to reassign these uh, factories they will always the, the civilian factories that you have will always process the queue top down so whatever is top will get uh, priority there is one exception you cannot build um, and that is the exception is for forts and for uh, naval base so whatever so if you, if you look at these things, right, uh, let, let me zoom out a little, you will see that for some of these, the entire state is selected. That means they will build it in the state whenever it is. And for some things, like here, just a small province is selected. One of these little things. So basically, if, I'm, if you look here, we are in the same state, but just this small region is... Uh, is selected so for things that are built in a small region and not in the entire state the civilian factories cannot build there if there is an actual battle happening in the in the region so basically if there's fighting going on actual fighting it it follows it, it's a reasonable idea that you can't build uh, there while uh, while there's uh, while there's fighting in the area, right? But the state it doesn't matter if, if they're fighting over here. You will still be able to build whatever you're trying to build because let's say well 
you can build it later on. However, uh, fighting done in a state also damages uh, whatever is built in that state. It damages the infrastructure, it can damage the civilian factories, it can damage whatever it is that is state-wise. So if you do have fighting in your state, you will create damage. You can still build in it, but you also receive damage to whatever is all uh, whatever is already there. All right. Uh, so we were discussing. Uh, I'm just using the hotkeys to make these uh, things appear from the left. So we were discussing uh, these production queues, right? You, you can assign 15 civilian factors at a time to work on a project, and they will output each of the factories will output uh, 75 will will output five each so we have 15 factories the output is 75 daily everything has a cost to build as you can see here the anti-air costs 25 units of production the uh, uh, infrastructure costs 3000 units of production so I think I said here 25 it's actually 2500 yeah 2500 units of production uh the come on the airbase only 1250 military factories cost uh, 7200 civilian factories cost come on civilian factories cost 10800 units of production so that is a lot it takes a lot to build a civilian factory refineries cost 14,000, that's even more than that. And I think if I just hover over, you can see it here. All right? Fuel silo, yeah, so here we go, 1450. Fuel silo only costs 5,000. It gives you a 100K capacity of extra fuel. Right? The fort, the fort uh, costs 500 at level 1. Then level 2 costs 1,000. Level 3 costs... 1500 and so on so basically it's uh, it's an exponential increase that's meant to have you take a long time to build a to build another Maginot line uh, this was a rebalancing effort uh, a naval base for a level of a naval base it costs 3000 this is static it's uh, it's no longer uh, it doesn't scale Exponential, I suppose it's exponential, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> like the forts do, but it's just a linear consumption of production. So basically, what's what's going to happen is here. Uh, here we go. Come on, because there's one more thing I need to address. So you can see the output is 75 units, but we have some uh, bonuses to that, which is the MIFO bills and the limited exports. And that gives us that gives us a 30% bonus, which means that instead of outputting 75 units of production, we are outputting 97.50 per day. Now, this you see here the MIFO bills bonus applies to anti-air, right? But it doesn't apply to infrastructure. So. <clears throat> only limited only the limited export bonus applies to infrastructure so what it it pays to to pay attention what you're getting bonuses for and maybe build more of those uh, now in uh, like in air bases you get the MIFO bills bonus uh military factories you not only get the MIFO bills bonus you get the limited export bonus and you also get 10 percent bonus from partial mobilization which we're going to discuss later on and also you have a 1.7 factor and this is important because it only applies to civilian uh it only applies to military factories civilian factories and i think it also applies to uh so let's see yeah it also applies to refineries and it applies to um, fuel silos. So for these four, right, you get a, a different multiplier, which which you wouldn't, which you did, you weren't getting for uh, for um, for these three, for AA infrastructure and airbase. So so 
for military factories you get an extra bonus from partial mobilization and you get a, a 1.7 multiplier at the end so let me put let me put it up here uh, let me put the military factory up here so that you understand what I'm saying so even though you're only producing 75 base production per day right what you're actually producing is at the end of that calculation and you don't have to worry about this calculation by the way but I'm just explaining to you the the, the root of the base now you you do not have to do any sort of calculation here in in your head but just understand that you get these bonuses partly from 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 uh, laws which are the partial mobilization and the limited export partly from a national spirit which is the MIFO bills which we're going to discuss later on and partly from the state infrastructure which is this uh, factor thing that's considered at the end so basically everything so this the 75 factories that that you get is uh, then you you get on top of that uh 10 percent plus 25 percent plus five percent which is you get 40 percent on top of that right and then whatever is left there you also multiply it by 1.7 and that's the and that's the construction speed that you're actually generating per day the same is for uh, for civilian factories for instance for civilian factories for instance you do not get any bonuses other than limited exports and infrastructure why because uh, the uh, mobilization and the MIFO bills are uh, done to in part to militarize the nation so they, they will only do uh, they will only give bonuses to military type buildings as you can see here the MIFO builds also give bonuses to AA they also give bonuses to the air base it also give bonuses also gives bonuses to uh, building uh, the uh, refinery in order to make Germany more self-sufficient but it gives a smaller bonus only 15% rather than 25% which it gave for uh, military factories come on yeah see 25% now after discussing all of this there is one more thing so yes I want to cancel everything okay this is a sign up top, this is the notification that tells you you have civilian factories that are available that aren't constructing anything. So, first of all, when you're looking at the construction panel, at uh, the construction panel, you have this type of uh, this layout here. The first line is what the infrastructure is in the area. The second line is how many building slots you have available in the area. And then further on, you have whatever um whatever uh, resources are available to you in that area now there is a function of infrastructure that impacts the resource collection so i'm going to tell you here in turingen if i'm building infrastructure you can see that i can all of a sudden get more steel out of this area now if i keep building more levels of infrastructure like everything the infrastructure goes up to 10 and here when i when i've maxed out the infrastructure in an area uh it uh, it turns blue meaning you can't build here anymore now you will also notice that all the levels have gone to the same production queue which means that they will build a level of infrastructure and then they'll start building on the next level you can't use two production queues to build to super build infrastructure in a in a state uh, so here we go in Württemberg two levels just gives us one extra aluminium maybe it's not useful maybe it would be useful to build infrastructure somewhere like uh, Saxony for instance or Saxon or maybe somewhere like uh, uh, Moselle see for instance if you build three levels of infrastructure here 
we get an extra 18 steel and an extra 4 aluminium. Here we get 4 steel, 1 extra chromium, 1 extra aluminium. You have to understand though that <clears throat> you will not be able to keep all the, all the extra resources that you generate because resources are affected by the uh, resources to market uh, modifier from your trade economy. So basically 25% of everything that I've generated here will go to market because that is our our trade law of limited exports which says 25% goes to market. So this is one of the reasons why building infrastructure <coughs> early on is interesting. Also, the second reason why building infrastructure early on is, is useful is because the modifier, if you remember we were talking about this, I'm just cancelling them. You, you can, so to build infrastructure, to build something, you click here, it adds one level. You click again, it adds another level. If you right click, it takes a level out. As you can see here, uh, it's actually, if you just hover over, you'll see the controls uh, explained to you. Okay, so. Uh, when we were talking about building civilian factories, so for instance, see, in Turingen, I have a 60% infrastructure, which means 6 out of 10, right? which means that my multiplier, my final multiplier is 1.6. Here in Brandenburg, I have an 80% infrastructure, which means that my final multiplier is 1.8. Now, if I were to build four levels of infrastructure here in Turingen, the and multiplier here would be <coughs> 2. The golden rule, this is the first part of the streamline that we're saying, the golden rule seems to be that you should not build infrastructure anywhere unless you want to do it for the resources. Or for Germany, for instance, you have these two areas that are highly urbanized, Thuringen and uh, Niederschleißen. Over here, you will get, so there have been some calculations done and so on. It is worth upgrading the infrastructure up to 70%, so basically just one level more here and here before you start building factories in, in those areas. But you need to have at least seven empty slots to where it's, or maybe six, I think you can get away with six too. So maybe here as well and here as well. To where uh, building infrastructure is affordable is actually uh, considered uh, a good thing. So uh, I think I was actually building civilian factories here. So basically here, 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 and here. To where building infrastructure will actually give you a return on investment that is worth it because you are wasting time here. You need to produce uh, 3,000 pieces of 3,000 items of construction, you need to output 3,000 items of construction, right? <coughs> and are you getting that back by, uh, so basically this, this takes a certain amount of time, right? But you will be able to build the factories faster in this area if you have an extra level of infrastructure because all of a sudden it, the, the final multiplier goes from 1.6 to 1.7 and the general rule this is a thumb rule right if you have at least six or seven available building slots right it is worth uh, it is worth building up your infrastructure to level seven <coughs> because it will pay itself off in time this is just to to sort of remember that. Uh, now, if I remember correctly, we're not going to build anything in Turingen. We're going to build. Uh, we're going to build it, however, in the other areas. Why aren't we going to build it in Turingen? Because we're actually going to get 
Max Infrastructure <coughs> in Brandenburg, Hanover, Turingen and Franken through a focus. And since we are going to discuss the focus, let's go and discuss the focus. But just to recap everything, okay? Before we go to the focuses, just to recap everything. You've got armies. The armies need equipment. The equipment, you need to produce it. In order to produce the equipment, you need military factories. And you need resources. The resources are freely available on the map. You can better exploit them by improving your infrastructure. In order to do any sort of building in your nation, whether it be infrastructure, whether it be military factories, whether it be dockyards, whether it be anything else that is not equipment, you need civilian factories for it. <coughs> you have a certain amount of civilian factories. These are used to improve your nation. And I think that is all we need to talk about the supply chain. Right? So, basically, in Hoi 4, you need to produce everything that you use. You either produce it, whether we, be, we are talking about fuel, whether we're talking about airplanes, guns, cannons, tanks, ships, everything <coughs> is produced out of some type of factory, mostly military, but you can also say dockyards, right? And it consumes resources to be produced, resources that you have... <coughs> Sorry about that. Resources that you have available in your nation or that you will import. In order to import, you pay in civilian factories. In order to produce uh, other civilian items like infrastructure, build more factories of any kind, you are going to use these civilian factories in the construction tab. There are certain modifiers that apply to construction, just like there are certain modifiers that apply to production. You do not need to bother yourself with it. Just understand that the more modifiers you can stack on top, and this is a general rule for Hot Four, the more modifiers you can stack on top, so you don't need to bother with the calculations. Just know that it's better to stack positive modifiers on all kinds of production, whether it be equipment, whether it be building actual factories and so on. So the more modifiers you can stack on top, the better.